Hi there, and welcome to another edition of the Torino Diaries here with... Hi there, and welcome to another edition of the Torino Diaries. You're back here with me on Bustanet. And, well, things have certainly taken a turn for the worse for us. After that, our 4 0 win over Avellino and the 2 all draw and the 3 all draw, we have failed to win in the last uh, few games. Uh, we managed to beat Livorno 3 2, but that was only courtesy of a strike by Z Gomez, which was fortunate because the goalkeeper decided to give us the ball. But then against Genoa, we got kicked out of the Italian Cup 3 1, comprehensively beaten. And then against Fiorentina, we were two goals down and we had to come back and salvage the equaliser right at the end of the match and this leads us to a big match against Juventus who have won 11 on the trot. Juventus are on a streak okay so they have they have uh, not lost yet and they've got a phenomenal defense they have yet to concede a goal in this area in about 11 matches and this is gonna be a challenge for us. Uh, we are now uh, with those uh, those defeats and draws have uh, given us a uh, given Juve the advantage right now, and we have a five point deficit to haul. So here we go. Um, have I've had to make some changes to my set pieces as well. <coughs> the last couple of matches I did rotate a few players, but here we are, the big match against Juventus. Will we be able to uh, come away and do something from this? I don't know. I, I definitely was a bit impatient in the last few games. I, I went attacking. I didn't do my normal defensive structure, see how it goes and adjust accordingly. No, I was going like guns. You know, I was pedal to the metal. I just went like, okay, we'll go attacking. Well, that kind of screwed things up for us. I'm going to put in Polsano for Zoran Popa for this game. And, um, yeah, Gaston Silva, he had a decent game the last match, uh, 7.36. Uh, he sort of come back. I hope he doesn't do a Moreno in this game. So here we go. All right, it's time to get the match underway. Let's kick off and do the best that we can do. Okay, so uh, send assistant. All right, they're playing a 5-3-2. Uh, we're going to be defensive from the off and see how this match pans out. And match starts out. Torino against Juventus. Juventus have the best defensive record at the moment. They haven't conceded a goal in 11 games. And uh, we, on the other hand, have been conceding lots of goals. Oh, no, not again. We look... All right, the def okay. The boys were quick to close that guy down and block his shot. So the highlight was pretty okay. I was a bit worried um, because uh, I like to see more of my highlights. I mean, anybody would love to see more of their own highlights than the AI's highlights. But so far, we're looking pretty comfortable. We have good possession, so there's no need for me to change my uh, position in the game. Okay, Bruno Perez with the throw to Matthias Pereira, Benazi. Benazi out to Baselli. Baselli back to Alan. Matthias Pereira should be free. Plays the ball to Meza. Meza to Z Gomez. Z Gomez inside the box takes a shot, but it's going to be a really hard attempt. Alright, uh, rushing the shot, so we'll go work more into box. So far, so good. 20 minutes now. Oh, Juventus haven't really come out to attack us. They're playing a standard control um, 5-1-2-2. So I should be expecting them to attack me a bit more, but they're not. Matthias Pereira has now picked up a card. We've got Belotti, Paragini on the bench, so if Matthias Pereira does not perform, I will have to take him off. Z Gomez is now on 50%. He'll have to stay. We'll have to take a chance and risk it. Usually I take him off because I want to protect my golden goose. Okay, we're going to make one change and take off Pereira and put in Paragini. I'm not happy with your performance, boys. Okay, we'll bring on uh, Paragini. We usually... Oh, no, no, Bruno Perez is injured. Don't have any cover for him at the moment except for Michel Marbel. 
We have a way onto the 60th minute. I'll make a substitution for Bruno Perez for Michel. Corner for Juventus. In the air it goes. We clear the danger with Z Gomez who plays it to Paragini. Paragini holds the ball up. Z Gomez gets back into position. He'll be able to play the, feed the ball into the center of the box. Uh, oh yes. Super substitute has scored off the counter. Torino 1, Juventus 0. The super sub has made his mark. Z Gomez. Oh, that was lucky actually, but yeah, oh man. I'll take it any which way the ball falls. Okay, good. This will force Juventus to come and attack me a bit more. And hopefully we get more. So what I'll do now is no more work ball into box. We're going to try and score with early crosses. Hopefully they attack. And I can take advantage of that. Paragini was an inspired substitution. Okay, Z Gomez has got one assist, but we'll have to protect his legs now. So put on Nandia Bellotti for Z Gomez. There's no point losing Z Gomez for the long term injury. He's played well. So we got Bellotti back on the pitch. Not many highlights in this match, are there? Still, I'm playing defensive structure against Juventus. I'm not taking any chances, not against them. If I go control or attacking, then I might have issues because they're probably going to hit me on the break. With 10 minutes left on the clock, what can we? What can they do? A sure six point nine. We have they have a corner. Pereira goes in the air, gets cleared, goes back to Pereira. He's going to do something else with the ball, and oh, they're defending stoutly at the moment. Paulo Oliveira, he's got the ball. He's got players closing him down. Marchisio now. Ball, oh, and come on. Oh, Padelli, thank goodness he got to the ball first. 92 minutes. And this was a pretty, um, you know, a pretty even match. We scored off a counter. So, and Juventus now. Alexandro coming down the flank. So the ref, come on, blow the whistle. Yes, he has. Torino. A huge result for Torino. That was a good win. Good win, good win. Finally, relief on my face because I was thinking this was going to be a match that we might lose. So the derby goes in our favor. Bruno Perez is injured and we have a chance now to haul that gap. Okay, so we have uh, managed to make it a two-point lead with the game in hand. So, you know, it's back in our favor. We haven't lost in the league yet, but we're not playing that well. We should grind out a win, and that's good enough for me. So what did we do differently? Um, that would be the interesting question. And now, in the last couple of matches, I noticed that this side of the flank would be giving up a lot of goals. And um, we also conceded quite a number of goals from set pieces. So I had to go in and change the way we uh, attacks. Uh, attack the uh, set pieces so right now i actually have opted to keep the one of my alan who's the ball winning mid, more or less like a ball plays like a ball winning midfielder i keep him back and uh and i make sure that i have one lurking outside one attacking from deep ideally you could you could actually um have a striker attacking from deep as well and on the right and on the left it's almost the same setup so that we keep um we keep three at the back now and we have one and two lurking on or attacking the ball from deep this means that if we fail to do the corner the ball can bounce back and we can uh, do something about um, rotating possession in defense slightly different okay okay now in defense i have found that this is actually better for my team um i don't make the guy who's staying forward to be the striker. I have a three-man strike force, but Z Gomez is actually the top player in my side. So normally when the ball gets cleared after we defend a goal, after I defend a corner, the ball might end up in this area. If it ends up in this area, Z Gomez, will, he has the strength and acceleration to break away. The AMR is going to be running off. So he plays the ball to the AMR. 
Okay, and the AMR is off like lightning, and then Z Gomez will charge into the box, which is what I want him to do. If Z Gomez is actually here, what will end up happening is the ball will be played to Z Gomez, and Z Gomez will play the ball back in for this guy, whoever is charging into the box. So this way, um, either Paragini or Z Gomez get in on the act. So it's it's worked, and um, I want to keep doing this and make sure that my set pieces are set up to be um like that um here actually i should be swapping this around so it should be the aml going up and then z gomez so that we we retain some kind of um how would i put this we retain some kind of symmetry in attack and defense so that's those are my attack corner routines right now so that's the first thing i did is to go into my routines and make sure that i don't um change things around um silver he didn't play too well in a few games and we actually went out and gave him a chat and hopefully that works. Um, I also, I'm also trying to make sure that players with aggression are playing. Unfortunately, I don't have that many players with high aggression. Look at Baselli. Baselli's aggression is 8. Benazi, his aggression is 12. Alan is the only one with some decent aggression. He's 16. Now, he usually wins a lot of the balls here but these two guys, not so much. So we may have to consider putting another player in to play in that position. And I'm looking squarely at Cesar Ebanez. Although he's bravery 7, he's an aggressive player. And to some extent, um, I'm going to start thinking of other players who can play in that position in case I need to grind out results. And at the moment, my team, I just realized, doesn't have a lot of aggression. The thing about... This game is you need to really squarely look at transitions. They will tell you a lot. And I noticed that in a lot of my transitions when it came to set piece defending or how I take my set pieces, we didn't get back in shape and we conceded lots of goals. And um, we haven't been playing that well. We we're lucky, and in fact, to beat Juventus, even though it was a good match. You know, match stats wise, we we did quite good. Um, you know, performance, we did okay. But I still think that we need to do better because we got some really tough matches Juventus, Sampdoria, Lazio, Milan. And then after that, to close out the season, into Juventus, Napoli. And Carpi, who have been a bit of a nut to, hard nut to crack. Okay, well, if you're wondering, if you notice, my skin has changed. That's because we crashed hard out of the game so now i'm not going to use these skins i'm just going to use the default skin from si because i don't want to go into a match be leading and then be kicked out especially when it's a tricky part of the season torino traveling away to sampdoria hopefully i don't crash Tactics, we're going to use Meza. Bruno Perez is injured. So his place goes to Michel Marbel. Marco Milanese will come in as the other option. Uh, we'll have Paragini for Matthias Pereira and Mr. Bellotti for Louis Meza. So this is my lineup. And this is the players that are going to take to the pitch against Sampdoria in a must-win match. This is going to be a pretty busy period for us uh, I can't afford to have more players getting injured Bruno Perez is already out Dracovic is already out and we're going to start the match on defensive structure and see how it goes Benazi to Bolsano I'm looking at Sampdoria they are looking like they're playing standard or control mentality hmm could it be possible that this one will not show whether they're attacking uh, We'll have to find out because uh, the other skin used to tell me that then I would know if they're attacking. But now if they, I don't know, then yeah, too bad for me. It makes it even more and more interesting now. So Baselli with the ball. Uh, he is going to play to Alan. Alan working hard, finds Benazi. Benazi back to Baselli. Baselli is playing to Z Gomez. Z Gomez could not find uh, Andre Bellotti, Michel. Back to Benazi. The boy's looking quite patient with their build-up. I like this because uh, the build-up, the support players are coming in only when there is, it's favourable for us. So that's good. That shows that I'm very happy with the transition right now. Oh, what a goal from Baselli from outside the box. The boys were patient and they've taken the lead again. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's keep this going, boys. That was a nice pass to Baselli. 
uh, uh, toe poked in from there. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Sampdoria now a goal down. Zico Gomez has gone back up to 81%. That's good. So far, we seem to be holding a one goal lead. Well, no highlights at this point. So it's 33 minutes. We had one sh one decent shot. So we're going to change things about around and play work ball into box. Let's try to be a bit more patient with our shots on uh, on target because we only had two out of eight. So I'll work ball into box and hope that uh, we get more better chances. Okay, second half's underway. Sampdoria. Well, this guy is definitely on attacking duty. He's definitely going to be trying to play close to my defensive line. You saw how he bolted up. Z Gomez, a corner from Sampdoria. In the air. Oh, they've equalized. Mm. All right, we'll have to go control now. Stay on feet. Pretty miffed at the moment. Because this was the game that crashed on me earlier and I was actually leading them 2-0 when the game crashed. Now it's a level match. Allah now picks up a card. Belotti to Benazi, back to Silva. Silva is not picking up cards and that's a good sign. Marlon. Marlon is pushing forward. Benazi plays it back to Bolsano. Bolsano, he has options to pass the ball. The boys are being patient at the moment. Benazi. I can see the transition is pretty good. Uh, it's again that was an attacking transition, but the decision making of Benassi came into play. Belotti with a cross. Z Gomez picks it to one. Thank you, Z Gomez. Z Gomez plays it out wide to Belotti. Belotti goes after the ball and drops in across. Z Gomez. Ah oh, man, what was the keeper doing? Keeper was so sad. Uh, Paselli, Marlin. Oh, we could have made it three. Silva, you beauty. He does well. So that our um, corner attack corner routines are working well as well. So when on a, when we lose the ball, we actually do well to get the ball back. Oh, the boys are rocking it. Okay, Baselli is at 9.0. Very well. And okay, so it does show. They've gone attacking. So now I will go defensive. Um, Stay on feet. Work ball into box taken off. Okay, we'll try and hit them on the counter now. If they come at me, I'll have space for us to exploit. Ah, we've done well. 2-1. Narrow win over Sampdoria. Um, well, they should have. We got away with that. They were poor. 22 shots, 22-1, 60% possession. Well, we've done it. Uh, we've turned things around. We didn't have a good run here, but we're still failing to keep a clean sheet. Uh, we managed to eke out a win against Sampdoria after that win against Juventus. We went, this run was a pretty sad run. And uh, right now in the Serie A, uh, we're two points behind uh, Juventus and still have a game in hand. Ultimately, this is a simple game. If you want to play a game where you control the ball, you do things with the ball and you are not over committing yourself, create one tactic where you have as uh, your, your spine of the team is playing on support. That way, whenever you go through transitions all you do is you look at your players on support duties to make sure that they are the ones getting into the right places at the right time so when i'm going into an attacking phase of the game i'm actually paying a lot of attention to where Belotti is where alan is where michelle and silva are i don't really care about the attack duties i'm more interested in these guys but Sally will always come in late he's always hogging the box and he's going to shoot from range that's good to see but Generally, that's what I do. And then all I have to do is change mentalities if I want to do something different in the game. And it's a very simple way of playing and it works. 
Now, the only thing is, occasionally you're going to go through a bad run, and that's when you need to identify what's causing the bad run. In our case, we identified our left flank. So far, I, I, yell, I, mean, I told them off, I had talks with them, I criticized their performances. Then I'm also looking at my defenders. Marlon is now playing on this side. I mean, he was playing on this side. Polsano didn't have a very good game, but I didn't... Uh, lose faith in him his performances are coming back you can see that so Polsano is at 6.88 he's not doing very very well in this position which is a surprise to me but we have to make do with what we have and I'm, I'm I am trying to mitigate um, by working on um, set pieces as well our set pieces weren't that good so we changed our set pieces around making sure that when we attack the ball we have players back here to you know to recycle possession as well as players around here so we only have these bunch of players attacking the box if it works it works if it doesn't work too bad for us you know we keep it simple we keep it tight and um, and it's worked well, I hope you've enjoyed today's edition of the Torino Diaries. I'm trying to do something different with the show. One of the reasons why we're seeing these gaps in the game, I want you to watch key highlights. Key highlights, you have to always understand the story in a key highlight. If you can spot the story in the key highlight, you will be able to turn things around and match. And that's my plan for the next few shows. If you have any questions, you know where you can find me. You can find me at addicted2fm.com or you can hunt me down on Twitter at Bustanet. Till we meet again on the ether of the YouTube channels, you take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.